Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll be getting into the magic rules for Warlords soon, but this episode is going to be just reviews, and we're going to start off with a couple of Pathfinder models. First up is Sila. She's the iconic female paladin of the Pathfinder line. As you can see, she's wearing very heavy armor. There's a lot of plate armor. There's a little bit of scale armor here and there. On the back of the miniature, you can see her shield is being carried, but she has her helmet being carried or kind of cradled in her left hand. Her sword, a broadsword, is upraised above her head, more in a threatening pose than ready to strike. She's got a lot of equipment. There's a bow, and you can see a quiver on her backside that's being covered partially by her cape. And there's also a long scabbard coming down her left-hand side that looks not quite wide enough and maybe a little too long for the sword that she's holding in her right hand, so I figure that's probably for another sword. The armor is really nicely done. It's very crisp and clean and detailed well. It also just looks very intricate and precise. I like the armor a lot on the model. Most of the cleaning was limited to clipping off a few bits of extra flash here and there. Not a whole lot at all. Mold line was visible along the backside of the cape, but not really anywhere else. I think she would be great as a player character for D&D, Pathfinder, whatever. Also, I think she would fit in very well into a Crusader's Army for Warlord. And if there's anything I would like different about the model, might be to have it where you had the option to have the helmet or the bare head, but that's not really a big deal at all, just sort of a would like to have. Next up is an elf called Justice Ironbriar, and I really like the big ears. If anything, they could even be bigger and I'd still be okay with them. I really like the big floppy World of Warcraft kind of elf ears. He looks like sort of a cross between a rogue and a fighter, maybe even some kind of spellcaster mixed in. He's got a small dagger. It actually looks like a straight-edge razor in his right hand. Nothing in his left. It's extended a little bit, almost like he's casting a spell. I'm not really sure who he's supposed to be in the Pathfinder universe, so maybe he is some kind of spellcaster. He looks like he would fit that role to me. His armor looks more magical in nature almost than being metallic or like normal plate armor, but if you painted him to where it was normal plate armor, you could pull that off pretty easily. There were several visible mold lines on the perimeter of the model, almost all around the model, so he took a couple of minutes to clean up, and I think, at least for me, the best use of the model is going to be using him as the base or the source model for a conversion. You could easily put a staff or a sword into his right hand, clip off the hand with that has the straight razor, swap it out for a sword, mace, pretty much anything. In his left hand, you could put a shield on there. You could leave it open like he's casting a spell, like it is pretty much right now. That's where I think the best use of this model is going to be as a conversion starting point to make something really unique out of. These next two packs are from the Dark Heaven Legends line, and they're both reissues of older models. The first one is a three-pack of Highlanders. All three of these guys are armed with large two-handed swords. One of them has a shield. They're all wearing kilts. They all have long, stringy hair. A couple of them have beards. And if I was still playing Chronopia, I could drop them easily into a Sons of Kronos army. I have seen somebody who used them in a Warlord army to make a Highlander-themed army. I think they were basing it off the Crusaders army list. It looked very cool. I've seen it over at the Reaper studio once or twice. They would also be ideal for barbarian player characters in an RPG. Maybe usable as Chaos Marauders in a Warhammer Fantasy Battle game. Not 100% sure on that, but there are several different uses for these models. This next pack has three Arachno Assassins in it, and they're skeletons that have six arms, and they have different kind of armament in them. One has six swords, one has three shields and three hand weapons, the other has three bows, and they're all in similar poses where they're just kind of brandishing their weapons ready to fight. And I have to admit, I really had to scratch my head for a minute to figure out what I could use these for. And then I started thinking about the different types of skeletons in D&D, primarily 4th edition D&D, but I think probably usable in any. But I started thinking about skeletal tomb guardians in D&D 4th edition. And yes, I know the Tomb Guardians in D&D have four arms, not six, but I think they're usable in that role. Any DM worth his salt could adjust the stat block of the Tomb Guardian to make some with ranged weapons instead of the normal weapons and powers that a Tomb Guardian comes with. Probably not an issue at all to swap out certain things to make these very usable in that role. Cleaning on each of them was limited to little bits of flash, and the arms are posable or reposable. If you're very careful, you can move them into a slightly different 
position, but you do want to be careful to not snap them off. If you rebase your figures like I do, you can drop these right on the 25 millimeter square bases without a problem. If you trim up the integrated base a little bit, you could probably get them also to fit on 20 millimeter bases if you wanted to have some unique figures in, say, a Tomb Kings or Vampire Counts army. Okay, on to some chronoscope releases, and there have been a whole slew of new female models released. The first one we'll look at is a female Nova Corporation officer, and she fits in perfectly with the other three that have already been released. This is a single piece model. It required very little in the way of cleaning. You can see she's wearing heavy sci-fi kind of armor, but it's not really powered armor like you'd see on a Warhammer 40k Space Marine or something like that. But she does have a full helmet with a visor and a respirator. And I think a whole unit of the Nova Corporation officers would make good Arbites in Warhammer 40k, maybe even as Imperial Guard Troopers. I'm sure they could find a good home in a Necromunda game, and they'd also be perfect as CSO Troopers in Resolution. This next female model is called Night Slip, and she's built as a pulp-era heroine. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this was she would be perfect if dropped into the superhero miniatures game Pulp City. Obviously, she could be used in any superhero game, but that's the one that stuck it in my mind first. She's carrying two pistols. She has a long cloak on that's kind of blowing in the breeze. But as you can see, she's not wearing a whole lot of other clothes. It's more like, well, sort of as the name suggests, night slip. It's almost like she has her evening wear, or after evening wear, if you get my drift, clothing on. So maybe it's a little risque, but I didn't take any offense to it. I think it's an excellent model. Needed a little bit of cleaning here and there. But overall, it's a great model, perfect for a superhero game, or if you have some kind of pulp adventure game, I think she'd be good in that too. Just a really good model here. This is Betty, and she is a space heroine, and you actually get two figures in the pack. The smaller one is a little alien guy who's carrying a blaster rifle, and he reminds me a lot of the ghost in Ghostbusters called Slimer that was flying down the hallway and slimed Bill Murray. And then you have Betty, who's a one-piece miniature. She's carrying a Flash Gordon kind of blaster in her right hand. I like the look of it a lot. It has a cool retro look to it. Her other hand is on her hip. You can see that her clothes are very tight. She's almost spilling out of her top, and she's got her midriff showing, and she's wearing boots that almost come up to her knees, and they have those rings around them that remind me, for some reason, of the Jetsons. So I think she's sort of a cross between the Jetsons and Flash Gordon in my mind. Very stylistically cool miniature. I think she would work well, obviously, in a sci-fi game, D20 Future, maybe even Traveler. If you wanted to have a little bit of fun and not be so serious in Traveler, I think she'd be good in that. Even in a superhero game, I think she would work well. In Mutants and Masterminds, there's a character called Miss Martian, I believe. And I think this figure would make a good miniature for that character. I would probably find another use for the little Martian guy or the alien guy myself. I like Betty a whole lot and can probably find a use for her without too much trouble at all. Next is Astrid Berger, and she is billed as being a female spy. She automatically has sort of a Cold War era look to her, at least in my mind she does. It's a single piece miniature. She's carrying an automatic pistol, which she is cocking and getting ready for some action. Wearing a long trench coat and boots. She has a very blunt, almost no-nonsense haircut and a quite stern look on her face. There was one very faint mold line on the back side of the model that needed to be cleaned, but she was basically based and ready to be primed in about 10 seconds. I think you could use her in a game like Spycraft or D20 Modern. You could even use her in Call of Cthulhu as long as you matched up the era correctly with the pistol that she's carrying. This next girl is Natalia, and she is a female secret agent. She comes in two pieces. Her right hand and pistol come cast separately, and it needs to get glued into place. It fits on the body up at the shoulder at a ball and socket joint, so it fits in perfectly and also gives you a little bit of range of motion to where you could pose that arm a little bit differently if you wanted to. I think she has much more of a modern look than Astrid did. She's wearing a full-piece bodysuit that is pretty skin-tight, it's unzipped a little bit at the top, so she's showing off a little bit of cleavage as she's running away from whoever's chasing her. She's in a pretty dynamic pose, and there was some cleaning needed pretty much around the whole model. You could make out the mold line on almost all the perimeter of the model, so she took a little bit more cleaning than some of the other models this time around. I think she'd be ideal in any kind of modern setting, even in a D20 future or any kind of futuristic RPG. You could even drop her into a superhero game as some kind of agent. And while she took a little more cleaning than some other models, still a very excellent model here. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV, everyone. We'll see you next time.